In this video, I'm going to show you how you can dramatically increase your productivity by using Plop to build new files inside of your application. So Plop is a little tool that saves you time and helps your team build new files with consistency. An alternative tool to Plop would be something like Hygen. I've tried both these tools and I think Plop is much easier to get started with. I was fairly confused with Hygen. Um, maybe I'm just a little bit lazy, but I usually just go with the tool that's easier to use. And this has been recommended to me by people inside of my Discord server. So if you too would like to get some awesome recommendations on how you can improve your workflow and some help with your application, you should join the Tom Does Tech Discord channel. You'll find the invite in the description below. So I'm gonna start by going over the documentation a little bit and showing you the features that are available and the ones that we're going to be using in this video. This video is going to be a very slim guide of Plop. It does a lot more than I'm going to show you in this video, but I'm going to show you just enough to get started increasing your productivity. So the first thing you'll need to do is to obviously install Plop, and then everything goes inside of this configuration file. And then we have some template files, and these are going to be handlebars file. There's three parts to a generator, and there is a prompt, and this is an array. You can have multiple prompts if you like, and this is to get some variables from the user. And then you have actions. The most common action you're going to use is add. And then path is going to say where the file should be added. And then the template file is just going to be the file we're going to use as a template. You also have some other actions like add many, modify, append, and some custom actions and some comments. So I'm gonna get started straight away showing you how you can be productive with Plop. So I have this application here, and this is something that I've built in a previous tutorial. We have a folder here for controllers, and you can see we have two controllers here. We have a folder here for models, and we have a folder here for services. So if I wanted to create a new resource, let's say I wanted to add products to this application, then I would need to create a new product service, I would need to create a new product model, and I would need to create a new product controller. So I'm going to use Plop to automate that whole process. So the first thing I want to do is yarn add Plop, and I'm going to install this as a development dependency with the dash capital D. The next thing I want to do is to create a Plop file.js. This JS extension here is incorrect and it's not going to work. However, I can guarantee that you're also going to come across this error. And so I'm going to make the mistake here so I can show you how you can fix it in your application. The next thing I want to do is come to my scripts inside of my package.json file. And I'm going to call my script gen, and my script is just going to run plop. I kind of wish the developers of plop didn't call it this, but they did. And so now we have to write plop and install something called plop, which is a little bit unfortunate. Okay, so let's go back to the documentation and I'm just going to copy this code here. And I'm gonna place this inside of my plot file.js and we can run yarn gen. And you can see that we get this error here. We have an unexpected token export. Okay, so this is an expected error because we're using a JS file. We're not going to be able to use this JS file. What we are going to be able to do is to use a module. So we can say .mjs and now we can clear that error and run this again and you can see that it runs successfully. So when you create your plot file, just make sure you create it with an MJS extension if you want to use modules. If you want to use CommonJS, you can create a .js file, but you're not going to be able to use this export and import syntax. Okay, the first file that I want to make is a model. So I'm going to make my model and then I'm gonna make my service and then finally I'm gonna make my controller. So inside of my actions here, I'm going to create a new object and my type is going to be add. You'll notice we don't get any helpful hints here from VS Code, and this is because we're just using a module.js file, but Plop has a full interface export from TypeScript, so we can use that by, above this Plop argument here, we can say at types, and then we can import plop.nodePlop API, and now we're going to get some helpful hints from the interface provided. So now we can say path, and the path that we want to use is going to be source slash model, 
and then whatever we call our file, and then we want to name it .model.ts. So I'm going to say source slash model slash, and then I can use a template variable here. So I can say name .model.ts. And then we need to provide a template file. So I'm going to say template file. And I'm going to store my templates in the root of my project here. And I'm going to store them in a templates directory slash model.template.hps. Let's create that directory here, templates. And I'm going to say model.template.hps. You don't need to use the dot template here. I just like it because then I get that name in the tabs up above. So if we have a look at one of our other models, I'm going to use this session model here. You can just copy this here and then paste it in. And then we're just going to remove the things that we don't want and things like this that are hard coded, we're going to replace with template strings. So I don't want anything inside of my model definition. I do want this import up here except I don't want the ref import and I don't want this user import here. I'm just going to provide one property here and this is going to be something that's pretty generic. So I'm just going to say prop, uh, it's going to be required true. And I'm just going to have this property as a name. So now we have this export class session. We want to replace this with our resource name. And then we want to do that down here as well. So if we call this product, this is going to be product model. And then we want to do the same down here. So there's one flaw in this. If you have a look here, you can see that we have uppercases here. If the user doesn't provide the name with an uppercase, we still want to make sure that we're using this title case. So we can create a little helper function inside of our plot file that we can then use inside of our templates. So come back to the plot file. Under the plot.set generator, we can say plot.set helper. And I'm going to call this helper title case. And this is going to take one argument and that is just the string. In this case, it's going to be the name that we provide here. And I just want to return this string.replace with this regex. And this is going to convert the string to title case. So now let's go use that. And we can put our title case at the start here. And we can put it down here as well. And then we can put it down here. So the other problem we have is the name here. We actually want to use snake case for that. So let's make a new helper. I'm going to say plot.set helper. And I'm going to call this snake case. And again, this is going to take a string. And then this is the function that we're going to call on that string to convert it into snake case. All the code for this is going to be in the auth API tutorial repository that I'll link to in the description below. If you just want to copy and paste these helpers. Handlebars does come with a few of its own helpers, but these ones I couldn't find in their documentation. So I thought it was a good opportunity to show how you can add helpers yourself. So now we can just use this snake case helper here up inside of our path. I'm going to say that our name is snake case. So the last thing that we need to do before we can run this is to add a prompt. So you can see that we're using this name here, but we don't ask for any user input yet. So inside of our prompts array, I'm just going to add a new object. I'm going to say type, and the type is input. The name is just going to be name, and the message is going to be name your resource. So this input type here, if we go back to the plot documentation, they say here that prompts use inquire.js. So if we go over to inquire.js, you'll see that this too is a very comprehensive library that has all sorts of different prompts that you can use. So you can see here that you have a list that you can select from. We have a raw list. 
they even have things like fuzzy search. So as the user types, it's going to auto complete and search for them. This is a really powerful library that you could use outside of Plop if you like. So let's run this with yarn gen. And you can see here, name your resource. I'm going to call mine product. And it says here that it's created one file in source slash model slash product.model.ts. And this is exactly what we would expect. Let's have a look at our product model. And you can see here that we have our product named correctly with the title case. We have our product model and we're exporting our product model. We're just creating the model from the wrong class name. Let's go fix that. You can see we're hard coded session here. We just need to copy this here and paste it in there. If I try and run this again and I name the resource product, you can see that I get an error and this is because the file already exists and Plop is not going to override it for you. So you need to make sure that you delete it and then you can run your file again. One easy way of doing this would be to use the source control panel on the side and we can stage these changes here we can run this again for this product. And then we're going to get an unstaged change here. And then if we don't want this change here, we can just easily revert the unstaged change. Let's go have a look at our product. And this product model looks perfect now. So let's go on to creating our services. If we have a look here, you can see that we have all sorts of functions in this service. So this user service has a find user by email, find user by ID, and a create user. And you could imagine that for each resource, there's lots of different actions that you can take on that resource. For example, you might have an action to create a resource, to update a resource, to find a resource, and delete a resource. And being able to create all of those with one simple command is really powerful. So I'm gonna create a new template file, and I'm gonna call this service.model.ts sorry, .hbs. And again, I find the easiest way to create these handlebars files is to just copy a existing resource and then paste it in. And then you can just go through and replace the hard-coded names with your variable names. So I'm going to use the title case and then I'm going to use name. And this is going to import, say, product model from and then we're going to say snake case name. And the reason we're using snake case here and not title case is because in our plot file, we name the file with snake case and not title case. And then we just need to import the resource definition. So every time we see this user here with a capital, we can just replace this with our title case name. Let's do that. I'm going to press command F2, and then I'm just going to paste. I don't want this find product by email. That makes no sense. Find product by ID. That makes sense. And create product. That makes sense too. So let's leave these two here. And I'm going to go back to our plot file and I'm going to create another action. So I'm just going to copy this action down. And I'm just going to replace model here with service. And this is going to be templates, service.template. And it's going to be .service.ts. So I'm going to commit the template here. And I'm going to commit the plot file. And then I'm going to revert my product model. Let's try this again. Product. And I have an error here. It couldn't find the template. And that's because I called this service.model.hbs. And this should be service.template. So I'm just going to commit both of these changes. And then I'm going to revert my model here. And let's try this again. And now we successfully created both of the files. And if we have a look in the product service, you can see here that we're importing the product model and the product model is also a generated file. So that's really cool. The last piece that I'll show you is the controller and it's going to be fairly similar to everything that we've created before. 
So again, I'm going to create a controller.templates.hbs. I'm going to come over to my user controller and we have a lot of stuff in here. What about this auth controller? There's a lot of stuff in here. Let's create this one from scratch. So I'm going to say import. Actually, we can probably copy and paste the imports here from express. Yeah, let's copy and paste that. Then I want to import the service. So I'm going to import from services slash and then we have name dot service and our name is of course snake case and what we want to import here is we have two methods we have our create and our find so i can just copy this here And then I want to import the find. So I'm going to copy that as well. Now I want to say export async function create. Title case name handler. Because if I have a look in my controller here, you can see that my handlers are called create resource and then the word handler. So this is going to take a request and we can type this with our request interface and have a response. And again, we can type this with our response interface. Then I'm just going to say const body equals rec dot body. Then I say const and this is just going to create a variable for me. And I just want to call this variable, whatever our resource name is. So in the case of the product, this is just going to be called product. Let's wait and then create. In fact, I can copy this from up here. And then I'm going to execute that with our body. And then I want to say return res.send. name let's indent this we can come back to our plot file and i now need to create an action for our controller so i'm going to copy this down this is going to be controller and it's going to be snake case name dot controller and the template is going to be controller dot template dot hps let's go over and we can commit this template here let's commit our plot file and let's revert those changes and I can say yarn gen, we've got this product and it successfully created our controller. Let's go have a look at our product controller and you can see here that we now have a nice controller. So that is how you can dramatically increase your productivity with Plop. If you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you see any future updates. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.